PhD Access Bootcamp. This video is continuation of DNAC policy. So if you haven't watched that video, please go. Uh, link is in the description. Go watch that video and come back. In this video, we will continue with ICE part. Within ICE, we are going to create authorization policy, profile, etc. But before that, uh, we have completed macro and micro segmentation policy creation in DNA Center. So please watch that video and let's continue with our new flow. Now let's continue building our topology. So as you can see, we are hoping to build this topology by end of this bootcamp. So now we are focusing on policy side of the house. We have already created DNAC and SD access policy. Now we will focus on ICE prospect policy. ICE authorization policy is defined by configuring rules based on identity group and other conditions. So we have created a couple of internal users and in identity group. That's what we are going to use. In this lab, again, we don't have any active directory and hence you saw we created a couple of internal users in previous video within ICE. This is hierarchy of ICE policy set. You can have multiple policy set based on your environment and you can create a policy set based on tag and other things. I'll show you that. Within policy set, there are two component authentication and authorization. Authentication is simple, .1x, MAB or default. Within authorization, you have, uh, you define your authorization based on some condition. And if the condition match, uh, based on condition match result, you apply certain profiles or, or SGTs. In layman terms, those, what, what they do, they assign the endpoint to certain VLAN, apply ACL or perform a web you uh, redirect. All right. Again, this is a snapshot of ICE authorization profile. Authorization profile will check the user endpoint identity group to see if the user authentication to network is a member of known group. Like we created a couple of uh, groups, employee, manager, faculty, etc. It will verify they are authenticating user using wired or wireless.1x and then it will assign a correct SGT and a VLAN. And that's what you see uh, a screenshot from authorization profile. And uh, we will do it in, in live in the demo. ICE authorization profile. First configure authorization profile, which will use to associate an IP address pool to an endpoint or user as a part of authorization rule, which we are going to uh, create next. So first you create your authorization profile, then go into authorization rules. All right, we are now here for a demo. Policy, result, and here you can see you have authorization under result. We already saw what is under allowed protocol previously. So it's all kind of like a authentication protocol. We uh, ICE can use ETLS, EP, and everything. You can go legacy like MS Chap, etc. as well. But we will leave it default. Default setting looks good. Now under authorization, authorization profile, you have you can see there are certain default authorization profile like Cisco IP phone, WebAuth, etc. already created. We'll go ahead and create a, a few more. Now under policy set, you can see there is a default policy set uh, available under which we have authentication and authorization. As I shown you in the hierarchy, so under policy set, you will have authentication where you can do map.1x and default authentication, etc. Where you want to look for your user, you can specify that in endpoint and what you want to do once you have the user match, right? That, that also you can define. We will leave it uh, default or we will use internal endpoint for map because we want to authenticate only the known uh, MAC addresses. And for dot one x, we will use all user ID store. But mind it, we are not going to use the default one. This is the su summary, high level summary. What we are going to do: create user identity group and assign user. Uh, that's already done. Create authorization profile in ICE. That's what we will do. Create new device type as DA, and this is how we are going to create a new policy set. And you will see that. Finally, add authorization rules. So this is the uh, high level summary of what we are going to do next. You can pause the screen and read through it. Let's go ahead and create.
a net or a tag which we we will use to create new policy set so network device group i name it as da and i'm saying all device type as you can see we have created a new network device group called sda and you will see that this tag we are going to use in policy tag so we are not going to use default though it's easy to get started with default but i want to show you how to create a new policy set we'll call it again sda use the default network access because we are happy with uh, authentication protocols here select device type this is a condition studio and we are putting a condition calling device type equals to device type tag sda so this policy set will be invoked only if the network device which is coming for uh, with authentication request if it is tagged with sda then only this policy set will be looked so that's what that was the whole idea or uh, logic behind creating a policy set you can pause the screen and uh, look at it again device type equal device type sda now you can double click uh, obviously save the policy now you can expand this new policy set and you can see we have only one authentication policy and one authorization policy however in default you already have a sub few things pre-populated uh, and that's why starting with a new policy set uh, can be time consuming uh, but i want to show you all the possibilities so that's not a problem let's go ahead and create uh, a few more authentication rule we want 802.1x authentication for our um, laptop you pcs etc or any 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 device which can support dot one x based supplicant all right so i'm creating a new authentication rule so idea here is if user is coming as wired dot one x or wireless dot one x it will require a little bit of practice from your side and once you get a hold of it it's pretty easy so the logic here is wired dot one x or wireless dot one x you can uh, save this condition you can give it uh, some name so that you can reuse it so you can choose something existing or if it is a new custom condition you are creating you can uh, give an say save it as a new name and as you can see i'm mixing wired and wireless together so i may not find anything in the drop down and hence let's go ahead and save it with a custom name dot one x wired and wireless okay one authentication condition is created successfully and always make sure once you create new condition uh, click save or use button you can expand it you can go back expand it and verify this time we do not have didn't make any changes so we don't have to save all right for dot one x we want to use either all user id store which is a sequence of internal ad and everything or you can but since i know in this lab i am going to have my user as internally user created so i can leave it like that but it's better to use all user ids in store because so that in future if you are you ended up joining a active directory you don't have to come back and make any changes here Now let's create another authentication rule for MAB, MAC authentication bypass. We will use some uh, pre-existing conditions that is wired or 
wireless map. Again, uh, this is a custom condition. I'm mixing wired and wireless together. So let's put a custom name here map wired in wireless. internal user a internal endpoint yes because all my map they will be known mac addresses same thing with authorization profile this is empty default deny access but good that we don't have the pre-populated ip phone blacklist etc so it's a kind of like clean slate uh, and we can only create authorization rules what we require in our uh, environment so we have already created uh, certain macro and micro segmentation policies on DNA center and based on that we are going to create authorization rule because it's a combined logic the policy is a combined logic you have that part of that logic sitting in DNA center as a part of segmentation and the same logic need to be implemented in eyes so they need to be in sync All right, so we are creating a policy for our executives and if they connect wired uh, with the wired connection Let's find out From the drop down identity group name User identity group is manager executives are manager so we are saying that if a user comes from user identity group manager and wired authentication happen okay so this is our condition let's save it as a use we can attach authorization profile and we can attach security tags you can see the security tags are available what we created in dna center managers etc but there is no authorization profile created yet because we we didn't create custom authorization profile what you see in the drop down they all are pre-populated or predefined um, authorization profile so let's live with permit access for now we can uh, either go back and create authorization profile right right now and then start uh, continue creating authorization rule and let's do that so it's again order of operation when you start creating your authorization rule you, it's expected that you have authorization profile created we didn't do that earlier so let's go ahead and create authorization profile pay please pay attention what we are doing here we created an authorization profile with the name corporate executives access type is uh, access accept the key thing what we are doing here is a vlan so we want if this user is authenticated then this user will be parked in certain vlan And this is the notion uh, uh, the subnet IP address plus layer 3 or uh, virtual network ID combined together in this format you need to apply that so uh, I want to make sure that uh, whenever a corporate executive uh, uh, authenticate with dot one X he'll be uh, given a security tag of manager and parked in this VLAN 172 162 whatever we created is a part of ip address pool as you can see i am in network hierarchy and just want to confirm that this is the ip address pool uh, what we expect for this user pretty straightforward so we created one authorization profile and let's repeat it for other segmentation purposes or 
now you can i can go back to authorization policy and you will see that the newly created authorization profile it is available in drop down and it completes our authorization rule one authorization rule so as you can see uh, the, your authorization policy uh, consists of few op objects like authorization profile and security tag plus condition studio this is my final uh, authorization rule how it looks like so we have uh, authentication rule created for authorization rule created for uh, architect developers guest pci server mainframe and etc and as you can see one of the sample i'm showing you just for uh, say for wired map if the identity group is pci uh, server and it is a wired map then apply that so i'm just expanding the conditions one by one for you so that you can take a look it's and condition you your identity user group plus how you are authenticating the bo both conditions should satisfy and this logic what we are using is just for our lab purposes in your uh, production environment you may have a more concrete use case more so make sure you know your macro and micro segmentation strategy on high level and then uh, you are you are able to translate it in ice so i'm going to create one in front of you identity group name if identity group is from architect and we need one more condition and if it is a wired dot one x authenticated user save this is a custom condition so name uh, uh, you will not you may not get anything in the drop down okay we created this previously hence it was available now say use wired architect condition studio com combination of two conditions identity group plus authentication method if that condition is satisfied it will be given a, auth a, a authorization profile plus a sgt very simple logic it's a simple logic but uh, uh, it it will take some practice before you, before you can totally um, get it because it's combination of multiple objects now our policy set creation is complete i want to show you the identities these are the internal users and they all are part of identity group which we are using inside our network and as you can see i have created a endpoint identity group for map authentication and right now i do not have any mac address avail available or associated once we know it or learn it we will populate it here and we will take care of it during validation but for now the identity group is uh, already available So we are pretty much done with uh, policy creation. We have a dedicated policy set called SDA policy. It has certain authorization policy uh, for our users, various user type, and these are the authentication method we are going to use. So far, we don't have any uh, user connected to the network. It's all planning what we are doing. This is the snapshot of our policy. Uh, make sure if you are following along with me on this lab, have your a uh, policy snapshot well understood or a snapshot available like this in front of you so that you know uh, what to validate when we complete uh, building our lab thank you and i'll see you in the next video thank you very much